Hey, I'm Sam and I do design and in the video today, I am showing you how to turn your sketches into 3D models. We've all heard how important sketching is to become a designer and also to translate that into 3D space so that you can move the model around and send it off to manufacturers. But some of the most important people in a design studio are the types of people that can sketch in front of clients. So you can come up with ideas in meetings and sketch it and visualize it in real time. You can either do this physically with pen and paper or you can do it on something like the iPad with Procreate, but those types of sketches limit you in the 2D world. Once you've got that 2D sketch, you have to go away to your computer to model it in 3D so you can spin it around and see it in space. But over the last few years, there have been developments to be able to bridge the gap between sketching in 2D and having a 3D object. Gravity Sketch is an app that was founded by two designers and they actually designed the app around their existing pain points in the industry. It's a collaborative design tool. So like I said, you can sketch in front of people, sketch with people, everybody can join in, whether that's your boss or your client, everybody can have a say in the design. Traditionally, Gravity Sketch has been a VR sketching app, which means you need to have a computer, you need to have a headset hooked up, and you need to get yourself a space that you can start sketching without hitting anything. It's meant that you can sketch in space and take your 2D images and turn them into 3D models with the same types of movements that you would in the real world sketching. But now Gravity Sketch is working on an app for the iPad and that's what made me really interested in them. To be able to take a sketch that I've done in Procreate and transition that into Gravity Sketch and turn it into a 3D object is really going to change the way that I work. And in the video today, I am giving you a chance to become part of the waiting list for the beta tester program. There'll be more on that at the end of the video, but for now, I'm gonna show you how I've been using Gravity Sketch in my workflow. So at the moment, I'm in the app Procreate and you can see that I have sketched some rough ideas for a mouse design. I've got two side views and I've kind of had a guess at what the three quarter angle will look like, but this is where Gravity Sketch can come in. So now I've opened up the Gravity Sketch iPad beta and what I'm gonna do first off is bring in some reference images that I can use to start sketching the mouse. So I'm gonna swipe up from the bottom, move, procreate over onto the screen and you can see that we've got this preview to reference back to the mouse. Now if I want to hide this preview for any reason, I can swipe it over and then swipe back to access it. Now, because this is a beta program, these features might change and they might adapt over time, which means that eventually we might have the option to use the full on iPad split screen viewing in both Procreate and Gravity Sketch. But for now, this is more than enough and I can start to sketch just using this as reference imaging. So a quick overview of the app. And again, it's in beta mode, so this might all change. We've got our brush by changing the settings over here. And if you click on these brushes, you can also change the profile of that brush as well, whether it's a flat brush or more of a upright brush, whereas if you move it round, it's flattened that way. And you can have a mono line brush here. And also you can turn on this rotational tool, which means you can draw profiles with rotation like this. And that means that it's gonna be kind of like this vase shape that I've just drawn and also a planar tool, which means you can draw flat planes in space. Additionally, there are objects that you can put in and that comes in many different shapes and sizes. So you can draw those in if you want to. And that's basically all of the inputs that are in Gravity Sketch. Apart from that, you have options to select, change color, activate mirror mode, and change the layer that you're working on here as well. So how am I moving around the model before we even sketch anything? We've got the controls in the top right hand corner and that means that I can spin around the model in the exact same way that you can see the cube being spun around here. And if we want to change what plane we're sketching on, we can move it in the bottom there. So for example, if I sketch something on this plane, and you can see that I've sketched it there and I can decide to move the sketching plane and sketch something else there. And again, they're on two different planes. I can move it all around, move where that plane is gonna be sketching and then sketch again. So without trying to do much, I've already created some modern art. 
But we're not here to create modern art, we are here to make a computer map. So what I want to do first off is to sketch the base of the computer map. So think about what that view might be from the top and close it off. So now we've got the basis, oops, now we've got the basis of the computer mouse and we can spin that round and have a look at it. But I want to start building this in 3D, like I mentioned. So I'm going to change the plane that we're working on, move it somewhere up here, and then I can start to draw the top profile really rough. <laughs> No points for sketch accuracy at this stage because we can then come back in to the sketch and position using these nodes. Now what I pressed at the top left hand corner there was a node simplifier. I guess it simplifies the geometry and uh, at the moment I've been testing this app for a little bit now and the palm rejection is not quite as strong as on other apps. So sometimes you just have to uh, make sure that you're not resting your palm on the screen to be able to get a nice smooth line. Now what I want to do is to start uh, shaping this top form into something that is similar to the mouse that I want to sketch. So I'm just moving around the nodes a little bit. Okay, and then I can come back in and erase a dot that I made here. And you can see that we've got the beginnings of a mouse. Now what I really want to do is to sketch this so that we have a similar profile to the mouse that I sketched before. So a way to do that is to uh, click on the sketch that we want to edit. And then we have different options on the side here and I'm going to uncheck planar which means that now whenever we move the node around, we're actually changing it in 3D space, not just on that flat plane that we sketched it on. So that's gonna be really helpful because we can really start to push and pull these nodes. Okay. So we've got now a shape that's closer to our mouse. I can come back in and refine some of these curves. What we're looking for is nice smooth lines using as few nodes as possible. So there we go, we've got something that resembles the mouse. Now, all that's left to do is to start adding in details. We've got the overall architecture of the mouse and now we can go in and start to add details. So I'm going to select this plane and change where we want to sketch and fill in some of those lines. And by adding in some construction lines like this can really start to give the mouse some shape. Now what I actually want to do because this is a construction line and not a main line actually is just change the thickness just a little bit just to give us some variance in the exact same way that I would sketch a uh, normal pen and paper or procreate sketch using different line thicknesses can really draw the eye and give you an impression of the overall shape. So next what I want to do is to focus on some of the details for example uh, like the button and the split lines of the parts on the model mouse and all I'm going to do for that is to Oops, that might be a little thick so I can come back in change the thickness Okay, there's gonna be something like that what I like to do in this app is sketch something really roughly like this Just on one plane and then I can push and pull the different elements to bring it into the 3d shape so I'm going to select this, make sure that planar is off and then move all of these nodes to start to meet the form. What I'm going to do is just clean up some of those nodes a little bit. And just make sure it's following that form. This underneath is going to actually have to come all of the way out for all of this and I'm sketching at a weird angle at the moment but I can always move that 
later on. Yeah, so I'm just going to have to bring this back up. There we go. And as long as everything starts to line up in the X, Y, and Z axis, in the three quarter view, everything will line up properly as well. And you can see that I'm just slowly starting to build the right shape, but it's definitely a lot faster than needing to model this in something that's really confined and constrained like uh, SOLIDWORKS. So already with just a few simple lines, we've got some really quite complex geometry that would have taken us a long time to model in any other app. Now at the moment, we've got everything in orthographic view, which is not true 3D. Orthographic view means there's no perspective and it's all computer generated. It's not really possible to do in the real world. But what we can do is change the perspective over here. And what that enables is for the iPad to be moved around. And that's where it's gonna be really interesting to be able to sketch in front of managers, in front of clients, all collaboratively, because you can move things around, show people, they can have a look and move things around as well. And that's gonna be really helpful in meetings. Now, there's one more feature that I want to show you to make this mouse as realistic as possible, and that is to add buttons to it. So what I want to do is to make sure that I can come up to the drawing plane that I want. Move where that plane is. Come over to the rotational tool and I can draw in the scroll wheel like this. And exactly the same way that I can edit the pencil lines is I can come in, change the poly count to smooth it off a little bit. And then the final thing that I need to do is just add in a thin line. And get rid of that. And that's going to signify the left and right button. So there it is. That's how easy it is to sketch something in Gravity Sketch and reference something from Procreate. If this sounds like an app that could be useful to you, then I am also giving you the chance to become part of the waiting list for the beta program. All you need to do is click the link in the description below and you'll be put on the waiting list. And the first 50 people to click the link and sign up will be fast tracked. So if you wanna get ahead of the game and be able to turn sketches into 3D models as fast as that, then I strongly suggest you sign up to the beta and have fun with the app. Once you're on the app, I would love to see the types of things that you sketch and you can post them on Instagram. Don't forget you can tag me so that I can see them, tag Gravity Sketch so that they can see them and use the hashtag Gravity Sketch Does Design in order for us to share them. You don't have to just sketch mice, you can sketch anything from headphones to kitchen appliances to shoes, anything that's got some really interesting geometry and you really wanna show off the Gravity Sketch capabilities. So thank you for watching this tutorial. Thank you so much to Gravity Sketch for letting me play with the app. If you learned anything in this video, don't forget to comment down below because I love hearing about it. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.